Today we're going to be creating an animation where a robot shoots a fireball at another robot and animation player is actually what we're going to be using to trigger the fireball. I've made a little testing scene here. You can see we've got these two robots and now we want to animate them. Let's take a look at the robot scene. This thing on the back is the laser. So my idea here is that when the robot fires, the laser gun will sort of rotate into position um, and then it'll shoot off a fireball. In order to do this, we're going to use an animation player node. Animation player is a really useful node. You can use it for animations, but you can use it for a lot of other stuff. Basically anything where you want to tie together a bunch of different events in a sequence and control when each one happens, we are going to create a new animation. We're going to call it firing. Now we need to add some tracks. Tracks are different properties that the animation player is animating. So in this case, uh, one of the big ones is various properties associated with this laser. The first thing we want to do is create a track for rotation degrees. This check here, create reset track, um, very useful. Basically, you automatically create a reset track that restores everything to the way it was originally. So um, here we have rotation degrees. So they start at minus 90 on X and minus 180 on Y. I want this animation to last, let's say, three seconds. Right about the one second mark, we'd like the laser to be in firing position. So what we can do here is rotate the laser, and it looks like we're probably just going to want it X to be zero, and then add that to the track. So now if we go and play this, oh, that was unexpected, but actually I kind of like that animation. I thought it would just swing over. Hmm. You know what, actually let's, uh, let's run with this. It's going to stay in the firing position for one second. So we'll just duplicate this key again here. And then we want it to eventually end up right back where it started. So we'll duplicate the starting position. If we go through and play the whole thing, we get that and then it comes back down. Now, let's take a closer look here because I think, yeah, in the process of rotating, it looks like the base is no longer connected to the robot, which is probably not something we want. We're going to want to translate it in the Y direction as well. That means we do the same thing with the translation. We're starting with Y at eight. Then by this point, Y, let's try, Okay, so if we bring Y down to four, yeah, so then it's then it's flush with the surface again. Let's add that. And then um, same thing as before, we want it to stay in that position for one second, duplicate this key, and then we want it to return to the original position. Let's take a look at how all of that looks. Seems good. Okay, so actually having this laser hanging around is a little bit unsightly. So let's also have it be hidden when the robot isn't actually firing it. I'm going to make it invisible most of the time. When you want to fire it, we can add the visibility track. So at the start of the animation, it becomes visible. And then at the end of the animation, um, we want to make it invisible. So let's take a look at that. Okay, great. The robot will just stow the laser away when it's not in use. The other thing that looks a little weird here is you can see that uh, right now the laser is sort of intersecting the robot's face. That is not good. But fortunately, I made the robot's head separate from its body. So as part of the animation, we can actually just have it lower the head. Let's go ahead and add that to our track as well. So select the head, go to the beginning, add the initial translation of the head. By the time we get to here, we want the head to have lowered. I'm going to guess lowering it by four should be enough again, um, since that's what it needed for the laser. We'll see soon enough. So here's how this looks now. That seemed pretty good. The, the robot's head is now below the level of the laser, which looks a little bit more natural. We have the full animation. Now we need to actually fire the laser. What I've done is I've, I've set up this testing room. In it, I, I went ahead and connected the A button on a controller to this method shoot. So when you call shoot, it currently doesn't do anything. Let's fix that. The first thing that we want to do is we want to play our animation. To do this, 
uh, we can simply call animation player dot play firing. Uh, remember, reset would be what we want to call if we want to restore it to its original state. Although in this case, that isn't really necessary. If you look back at our animation, part of the animation restores each track to its original state. So we don't actually need to call reset at any point. Let's, let's take a look at how this looks in the room. So here are two robots with an orthogonally projected camera. And there's the animation. And there it goes back. And of course, as you can see, it's not actually shooting anything yet. I went ahead and created a fireball object. It's basically a bunch of particles. And if you move it, the particles will flow behind it like a tail. It has this function move, which basically means that you launch it in some particular direction. So returning to the robot, we want to create a fireball. You might notice I have a separate spawn fireball function here. When we want to actually spawn a fireball, first thing we do is, let's say, new fireball equals fireball scene that I previously created. And then we'll create an instance of it. Now you may notice I have this emitter node on the robot. There's no special behavior associated with it, but it marks the tip of the laser. So that's where the fireball is supposed to come out. We're using that as a guide to the direction and origin of the fireball. Back in the script, we want to make sure that that's where the fireball is. There are a couple of ways that we could do this, but the most straightforward is to just make the emitter the parent of the fireball. We will say emitter dot add child new fireball. Now, strictly speaking, you would probably not want the fireball to be a child of the robot. It would be better to instantiate it under the room that the robot is in, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. We can actually get around that by just setting the fireball as top level. Basically, what this does is um, the node ignores its parent transformations. So the fireball only exists in global space, not local space. And of course, as soon as we create the fireball, we want it to start moving. So we'll call new fireball dot move and then vector three dot forward. And this move function is, again, just something that I defined in the fireball. As a child of laser emitter, it will, of course, inherit the translation and rotation of the laser emitter. So for example, if the laser emitter is pointing straight up, the fireball will be traveling straight up. Now that we've defined all that, all we have to do is call it spawn fireball when we shoot. Let's take a look at how that looks. Here we are in the scene again, and I am going to shoot a fireball. That was not great. The robot that shot the fireball blew up. The reason is because the fireball is programmed to explode and kill a robot when it hits it. And of course, when it spawned, it hit the robot that spawned it. So let's go and fix that. Fireball has this property parent. In its code that governs when it explodes, it checks whether the area that it's touching is the parent. So all we have to do here is when the robot spawns the fireball, we need to set the parent to be the robot so that it knows not to explode immediately. New fireball dot parent equals self. That should fix that problem. So let's try this again. Time to fire. That was a little better, but this time the fireball went straight up. You can probably guess the reason why. It's because we spawn the fireball immediately after we fire. Fixing this is not that hard. We just need to add a slight delay. So what we can do is we can say yield get tree dot create timer. Um, let's say 1.25 seconds, because remember the laser is in position about one second after the animation starts. And then timeout. Okay, firing. That's basically what we want. However, this is not the best way to do it. Because if you think a little bit down the line, if you ever want to change the animation and change the timing of the animation, you now have to go edit things in two different places. You have to go into the robot animation player, but then you also have to remember to go into the robot's code and change this yield statement here. Right now, it's just this one 
spawn fireball function that we need to worry about. But if you imagine a bigger game with lots of animations and modifying the timing of all of them, it would be very easy to introduce some errors into our game. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to go into the animation player and we are going to call the function from the animation player. To do this, we're going to add a call method track. Call method track is targeting robot because that's what the script is on. And then let's snap to 0.25 seconds. So 1.25 seconds after the point of the animation where the laser is locked in place, we are going to insert the spawn fireball method from the robot script. And that's it. Let's go take a look. Basically the same thing as before, but now in a much more maintainable form. Being able to call functions from the animation player is a very useful trick. You can use it for tons of other things like, for example, triggering sound effects, checking hitboxes of different parts of the model for collisions, or basically any function that you have built into your script that you want to trigger at a particular time in the animation. Anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas for how to animate and trigger projectiles and other functions in your own project using Animation Player. Thank you for watching.